We have another episode of Blooms in the Dark. So, all the orchid night owls, <laughs> no matter what time of day or night that you find yourself in right now, welcome to this video. I have to admit, it is a little bit chilly here tonight, considering that we are in June. Very, very concerning. Anywho, this just proves to me that this is going to be a summer series. <laughs> Let's have a look-see at the first orchid that I have in the viewfinder, or that would like to be in the viewfinder, and see what you think and see what we find. Oh, here we are, here we are. This is little teeny weeny Phalaenopsis. Speciosa crossed with Violacea. Very, very fragrant during the day, fast asleep with her fragrance at night, even if I shine the flashlight on her. But look at this! Depending on how the flash shines on her petals and sepals, wow, you can really, really appreciate the waxy structure and texture of this bloom. The deeper pink color that we see is only a reflection of the flash. She doesn't have different markings, so to speak, during the day. It's more the middle pink that is her true color during the day. But what I really appreciate about seeing her like this is that fuzzy, fuzzy lip. That is something that during the day is very easy to detect, but very hard to film because of how it reflects. And at night, oddly enough, with the flash on that lip, the real fuzzy, fuzzy texture comes out super, super clear. During the day, we can sometimes appreciate the white of the fuzzy lip, but more often than not, it picks up the reflection of the rest of the fuchsia of the lip and appears to be more fuchsia. This is amazing. The crystalline effect is also evident. I am very much enjoying what I'm seeing in the viewfinder. Poor little thing is probably freezing its little bloom off. The single bloom that I have for the season, considering the conditions she had to suffer through early spring too dark. What an oxymoron while we're filming in the dark. But yeah, during the day, far too dark, not enough light. A single bloom? I am not going to complain. Love this little orchid. She is still around, thankfully, and I'm hoping that now with the warmer temperatures, she will somewhat recover so that I don't lose her out of my summer blooming and novelty Phalaenopsis collection. Phalaenopsis speciosa crossed with Violacea. Skittles fragrance during the day and probably a little bit in shock at being outside in cooler temperatures and having the spotlight on her, but well worth a try. And I think this one really, really sparkles, for the lack of a better word, at night. I have been waiting to be able to film this one at night, and you can already possibly see the outline in the viewfinder before I put the flashlight on, though. So, let's have a look-see who is hiding. <gasps> yeah, she is the Selogeny Lime Bay, very often featured in my Blooms For You videos, because this orchid is one of the ones that just keeps blooming, sequential spikes and all of that. But before we get to the second bloom, which is way down there. <laughs> this is the second spike with its second bloom. As you can see, just a little bit of wind would make her move around. We would be risking the focus, but let's go and have a closer look at this bloom because I cheated. I took this close-up footage a little bit before filming this clip because it was wind still and I need to get this orchid back indoors. It's not exactly temperature that she prefers, but my goodness, my goodness, the details that we can pick up and appreciate with the flash. This is insane. This is incredibly beautiful, how the texture and the structure of the lip comes to life with the extra additional light. Fantastic. Just adore what I'm seeing here from a completely different perspective. Now, if my commentary doesn't match what we're going to be seeing next, forgive me, but eventually in this close-up footage, we will be going all the way down the first spike which has been around since November, around that time of 2020. My first ever spike on this orchid blessed me with 
13 blooms that I could dedicate in my Blooms for You series. This spike, being the first one after the first one did not make it, has blessed me with its 15th bloom. 15 in total in a space of how many months? 17 months. Pretty astounding. As you can see, eventually, depending on how the footage goes with my commentary, we have come to the end of the longest spike that I've managed to hold on to, 15 blooms. The 16th bud is failing, but it's quite an achievement. I've had two blooms on this orchid twice in a row now, and they somewhat tried to sync up, but that long spike is going to fail, and we will be left with this one single spike. If the third bud now on the second spike does not blast because I brought her outside and she's not accustomed to any kind of breeze that has a bit of a chill in it. If she's accustomed to something, she's accustomed to somewhat chilly temperatures because of, you know, again, the horrendous spring conditions that she had to tolerate. But the breeze, she was very much protected from any kind of breeze that you can now see waving through the leaves. Also, forgive me for the little shakes during the B-roll footage. It is quite chilly and I am a little bit cold. <laughs> I'm a pansy, but anyway, that's beside the point. This orchid definitely, definitely comes to life under the flash. I love it. Beautiful. I'm very, very impressed. Here is one I'm absolutely delighted to have in bloom. I'm expecting big things, but because of her funkiness with the colors and everything, ha, huh, yeah, again, let's stop teasing the viewfinder and see what we've got. Ha, huh, what a shame. This is Renanthera citrina. Gorgeous, gorgeous yellows with funky little spotting, with bell-bottom kind of carnival little petals dangling down below. A beautiful spike. Very happy to have her in bloom. Never considered that a Renanthra would bloom because of the circumstances in the past, but here we are. She managed. The spike isn't a branching spike the way it was last year, but nope, the color completely washed out. The B-roll footage, I cheated. I had a look before just so that I wouldn't go, aw, you know, <laughs> but literally, yeah, aw. It's not as impressive as during the day. The flash really, really knocks all the impression of the yellow out. Trying to move the camera a little bit so that the flash doesn't hit the bloom as directly as the viewfinder has it, so that maybe we can somewhat gauge the idea of the beautiful pale yellow that she has, get the spotting right. But what I am appreciating a lot is that the detail of the lip is very easy to focus on and see in greater detail. That does surprise me. And I'm happy for it because, wow, what a shame. I thought this one would light up beautiful in yellow with the flash, but no go. I'm very surprised. Yep, Renanthra citrina. I was not expecting that this one would be a washout. What a shame. But we will look at her during the day at some point, and then you will be able to tell the difference because, my goodness, this is a beautiful charming orchid. Considering she's such a highlight orchid and she didn't get that at all, very happy to at least have this spike. Don't want to oversell this orchid, but this is her time of night to shine. Her fragrance is intense. I'm going to try and keep this clip to a limited length, <laughs> but if I go yapping on a little bit longer, then it is because I am experiencing the divine, divine fragrance of <laughs> Brassavola tuberculata. Fragrant at night. At least one of them that we are featuring tonight is fragrant. And well, you can see that well, we've got white, a lot of it, against a flash. Hmm. That sort of doesn't really work here, so I'm trying to move the camera so that we don't get a complete washout, that we can appreciate some of the detail of the lip. It's pretty impressive. Although the beautiful tissue effect that we can appreciate during the day is not as evident, but there's other things that we can see when we look deep into the throat. Amazing little intrusion here to get down and in there, which is something that I couldn't manage during the day. Petals, sepals, complete washout, 
we can appreciate a little bit of the satin effect that she has. Not much though, so yeah, the pollinators have different eyes. They appreciate different things to us, but it is mainly their sense of smell that attracts them to this orchid because clearly she's really got nothing much going for her except for her beautiful powdery citrusy creamy fragrance it's delicious and even though the bloom is not very very big maybe she's eight centimeters across petal to petal but really there's not much going for her size wise except for that lip <laughs> talk about in your face and outstanding but yes but yes it is confirmed the only real real beauty of this orchid at night is her fragrance unfortunately i cannot give you the scratch and sniff service so that you could tap your device and the fragrance would permeate around the video. Unfortunately, that is not an option. Otherwise, hey, I'd be happy to share. There's plenty of this to go around. Yeah, but Brasivola tuberculata, her strengths are elsewhere, not necessarily in how gorgeous her blooms illuminate at night. I am hoping that these blooms are going to make us smile just as much as they make me smile during the day. So let's put the viewfinder and focus out of its misery. <laughs> Plastic beauty, huh? <laughs> this is Phalaenopsis cornucervi variety Chatella Day. And because Chatella Day sounds so much like Lady Chatterley, who was eccentric in her own way, <clears throat> just to use a different term. And because she makes me smile, I call her Lady Chatterley. But oh yes, we can really see exactly how plasticky and waxy these blooms are with the flash shone on them. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of light or sun to also give us that same reflection. So it's not necessarily the night that makes it count, but it's it's very, very evident. You would think these blooms were coming from a craft store and then you had just stuck them on a spike with a glue gun, but nope, they are for real. During the day, they do have a fragrance. It's very, very sweet. I would also say a sort of a candy-like fragrance, but not as intense as the Speciosa violacea, but it is very pleasant. You can see currently I have three blooms available with two more buds already showing their color and there's a third one tucked away as well but those may blast now that i've brought her outside still i think for the series of orchids in the dark it is well worth documenting these blooms as best as possible and weather permitting beautiful I can't really see my little hard hat little guy in there. He's probably not smiling because everything is so bright and lit up and it's like, excuse me, what are you doing? It's time to sleep and rightly so. I wouldn't argue with that, but still. The little yellow column on the top that I always akin to a hard hat on a construction site and then the white lip that protrudes. It should be smiling, but these three blooms certainly are not smiling and hey, I don't blame them. But still, it was very nice to see them in the dark and appreciate some more of that detail. No regrets on this one, but it doesn't jump out in comparison to the day. Pretty much similar. The color is true as well. The deep burgundy, rich, almost towards the brown side. Everything matches beautifully. Flash or daylight, it really makes no difference with this orchid. An orchid bought because of her name, Hyacinthoides, Hyacinthoides, Hyacinths. Hyacinths are fragrant, right? Hyacinthoides, what could go wrong? Um, yes. <laughs> Turns out that area Hyacinthoides is not fragrant and, well, <laughs> she is also very, very difficult to feature, get right, get the texture of her blooms to be able to put her into focus, all these things. And on top of that, you don't have much time to try and get all of that documented because the blooms aren't very long lasting. But here she is in my collection, definitely not fragrant, nothing really hyacinth about her. You would think, yeah, but you know, her blooms are clustered the way a hyacinth peduncle is clustered and yeah, I tried to buy into that thought concept, but you know, what sold me on this orchid after she bloomed, after not getting a fragrance out of her, after feeling as though I had made a mistake in purchasing her in the first place, what sold me on this orchid is that she looks much more like a ginormous lily of the valley 
the rest of the orchid is rather big and large, but we're featuring on blooms in the dark here. She looks like a lily of the valley on steroids. <laughs> Compared to the size of the orchid, these blooms in proportion, if you're thinking lily of the valley, they look exactly the same. And I absolutely adore lily of the valley, not just the fragrance, which I wish this orchid would have had, if not hyacinth fragrance. Give me lily of the valley fragrance, anything, because, you know, nothing is a little bit meh. <laughs> but she doesn't have that. The only attributes that she has is the beautiful white sprays of blooms that really, really look like lily of the valley to me. There is some fuzziness to the bloom spike. There are gorgeous sparkles in her bloom. She has a yellow dot at the end of her column, all very visible, but so difficult to focus. I think I managed to get some footage that does the delicacy of these blooms justice. She's a very innocent orchid to look at, let's put it that way. Very charming has a terrestrial kind of approach, could really benefit from a little bit more humidity in my climate, but hey, every once in a while, she does bloom for me. Now, these are the first two spikes, and I'm hoping to get some more out of her before we go and repot her for the first time on my channel. But yeah, Area Hyacinthoides, to me, more like Lily of the Valley, and once I recognized that, that sold it for me. Oh boy. <laughs> I cheated again. I know, I know. I will start cheating just in case there is something I see behind the viewfinder that I am not prepared for. I freak out. It's very, very late at night and I freak out and, you know, the neighbors may just have an issue with that. Oh boy, stop the jibber jabber. Let me show you this one. <laughs> Ooh, what do you think? Ah, chef's kiss. Mwah. What do you say to this? Dendrobium unicum. Money shot, money shot. Yes, I will take offers for this image. <laughs> Putting watermarks all over it. Have you ever, ever seen a Dendrobium unicum like this at night with flash on it? in clear view with all the details, obvious and visible, not washed out cartwheels around the patio in the dark because then nobody can see me and nobody can laugh but oh my word let me tell you something when i was taking that b-roll footage i was seeing all the white dots and i was thinking mealybug mealybug another mealybug but every time i moved the camera that white dot would disappear and all that is is reflection of the waxy texture that these blooms do have but it's not that obvious to the touch but my goodness have you ever been into the lip of the unicum like really in the lip of the unicum and I'm not just talking, ooh, what a pretty lip, and we look outside, but no, but no, I mean like under and in and focusing in on it. Incredible detail. I am overwhelmed, over the moon. Hey, speaking of moon. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, over the moon, but I'm back again. I'm back on, you know, feet back on the ground, admiring this gorgeous, gorgeous display. I am so happy the orange didn't wash out. I cannot tell you how happy I am. And I didn't want lead balloon effect. That is why I took the B-roll footage before filming this clip. I had to know, I had to know. And I am not disappointed. And I hope you aren't either. Ah, oh, my goodness, she's so pretty. <laughs> Oops, and here come the neighbors. <laughs> no, just kidding. Dendrobium unicum, definitely. Not a disappointment, one bit. <sighs> Gorgeous. And with Dendrobium unicum imprinted in our mind, I don't have another orchid that could surpass this beautiful show. This is the orchid I'm going to end this little series of Orchids in the Dark with. Trust me, <laughs> this is the one that makes it worthwhile to be outside filming while everybody is fast asleep. Yeah, this is worth it. So thank you so very, very much for watching. 
I really appreciate your time. Hope that you enjoyed this episode. Wishing you a beautiful day on one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>